indoor air quality is a common issue, especially in bedrooms in homes. Joseph, why is indoor air quality, especially in bedrooms, an issue? Well, it is a very interesting question because most of the residential houses in particular in Australia, we don't have a ventilation system. Heating mm. and cooling is not a ventilation system because right. it only treated the indoor air. Yep. And bedroom is particularly interesting because most of the time when we spend time at home, we open windows in the bathroom, mm. in living room and in kitchen. But mm. when we sleep, most of the time we keep the window shut. Mm. And that causes a lot of potential issue in the indoor air quality of the bedroom. With the door closed to a room with occupants or a single occupant, what is the issue with that? Very straightforward, the buildup of contaminant inside the room is the biggest issue. And in a bedroom, we can easily tell there is a lot of contaminant accumulating in there by measuring CO2. Mm -hmm. CO2 is a very good proxy mm -hmm. to see the level of contaminant. Ideal air quality around about 1,000 parts per million. How high can it get to, Joseph, in a closed up room? Wow, it is a really difficult question because it's a function of how many people in your bedroom, mm. plus cats and dogs, yep. and how big is the bedroom. Yep. A simple comparison, if you have a couple living in or sleeping in one of the big ensuite in mm. the new development area, it may not get too high mm. because you got such a large volume of air in mm. the bedroom. But if you talk about one of the apartment bedroom, mm. it can easily go above two or even 3,000 mm. parts per million, which um, the recommended CO2 level for people to occupy it in is only 1,200. Wow. Yeah, if you start getting past 4,000, it's danger territory. Mm. The other thing with apartments as well is that You've usually, you can usually have two showers in one apartment and then the, because the apartment's pretty much just a living room and a couple of bedrooms, the, the amount of moisture and humidity that it can go to in such a small volume, yep. you, you have to let it out. <laughs> yep. I mean, either that or significantly upgrade your exhaust system to um, make sure you well, get rid of that area. You, usually you don't have possible. the luxury to upgrade mm. your mm. exhaust system in an apartment. Yep. Is it better to have a leaky room? I would say no, because Why? the problem is, even though you may have some level of air coming into the room and get out of the room mm. with a leaky room, mm -hmm. you also have many other issues happening at the same time. The most common one is especially in the southern part of Australia, like Melbourne or even Adelaide and um, Tasmania, condensation mm. in winter. Yep. Yep. Whenever there's air leakage, it means that the moist air in the house, in your bedroom, can go into all the cold, damp area, like your wall cavity. Mm -hmm. Once the condensation occurs there, and the next thing it will lead to is mold, mm. mold growth. And you have no control where your air is coming in and out. Yep with a leaky building yep. so it may just come in through all your wall cavity with all the mold bringing in all the sprawl mm. and allergens this definitely not a healthy option yeah, from right. what i can see what are the options in maintaining a healthy living area especially if you want to have the door closed you know for bedroom especially mm. the ideal solution of course is put in a ventilator with heat recovery yep. so you have a constant fresh air coming in and it's preconditioned with the exhaust air mm. that's the ideal option that's the bee's knees but it costs money and some people may not have the room or mm. space in the bedroom when they try to install it it may yep. be difficult then the next option is to open up windows mm -hmm. Even though you may still got some condensation happening mm -hmm. where your window crack open, mm -hmm. at least the next morning you can clean it up and mm -hmm. wipe it dry mm -hmm. and mold won't grow Yep, like that. If you think it's too cold or too drafty and you can't do that, at least 
you open your bedroom door mm -hmm. so you can leverage from the rest of your house mm -hmm. to bring in some level of fresh mm -hmm. air to dilute the contaminant. Now obviously though, going back to the window open, um, you also then have to start thinking about sealing up your house or your building envelope, right? Of course. Yeah. Some people may concern privacy or fire. What are the main solutions for that? Well, if you are really concerned about mm. fire, of course you can make two smoke detectors in your house. Mm -hmm. In case one drop off, you still got another. Mm -hmm. If you worry more about privacy, you can consider some other alternative um, or modification to your bedroom door, mm. like installing door grills mm. or just cut short the door a bit so you maintain enough passage for air to go in and out of your bedroom. I guess the mor moral of this, of this particular video is that it's critical that we do manage uh, indoor air quality with windows. Yep. Plus, mm. a leaky house won't help your indoor air quality. Yep. <laughs>